Okay, here's another example of how I'm going to use this handy dandy equation to solve this particular problem and the problem involves work, energy and power and uh, let's read the problem, get a feel for what it's about. It's a simple one here, it says uh, Johnny coasts down a 20 meter tall hill starting from rest. Assuming no friction, how fast will he be riding at the bottom of the hill? So also we're going to ignore wind resistance, keep it simple. And the equation that we like to use is any work you put into the system plus any initial potential energy that you had plus any initial kinetic energy that you had is equal to the final potential energy plus the final kinetic energy final plus any heat lost along the way. And again, most heat lost is, um, is accomplished by overcoming friction or wind resistance or something like that. And you can already guess that since there's no friction or wind resistance, we probably don't have any heat lost in this case. Drawing a picture of what's happening, so let's assume that uh, we have this big hill and uh, Johnny is sitting on top of his bicycle. So we have a bicycle right there. Here's the, there we go. And he's going to roll down the hill. And when he gets to the bottom, There's Johnny riding on his bicycle at the bottom, assuming that the height of that hill is 20 meters. How fast, what will be the final velocity of Johnny at the bottom of the hill? How fast will he be going? And believe it or not, all that can be solved with the exact same equations we used before. So let's plug in what we know. Is there any work input? In other words, is Johnny pedaling and adding energy to the system? And if he's just coasting, not riding, not pedaling, then there's no work input. How about potential energy initially? Well, he starts at the, bottom, at the top of a hill, and if we consider the bottom of the hill to be our reference height, if h equals zero is at the bottom of the hill, then he definitely did have some potential energy when he started, and that potential energy will be mgh. How about kinetic energy? Well, it says that he started from rest. He was not moving. If Johnny wasn't moving, he had no kinetic energy at the beginning. How about afterwards, at the bottom of the hill? Did he have any potential energy? And since at the bottom of the hill, height is zero, no potential energy. How about kinetic energy? Well, we're assuming that when he gets to the bottom of the hill, he was moving. And uh, the definition of kinetic energy is one half the mass of the object times the velocity of the object squared. So here's that final velocity we're looking for. And that comes out of the portion of the equation representing the final kinetic energy. And then finally, heat lost. So since there was no friction, no wind resistance, we can say that there was zero heat lost. And so this equation then boils down to mgh, the initial potential energy Johnny had, equals one half mv final squared, the final kinetic energy that Johnny had when he gets to the bottom. Now we simply have to solve that equation for v. We can right away see that mass cancels out on both sides. I'm going to turn the equation around, put one half v final squared equal gh. Then I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. So we have v final squared equals 2gh. Then I take the square root of both sides, so I can say that v final is equal to the square root of 2gh. And all we have to do now is plug in what those numbers are. So this is equal to the square root of 2 times 9.8 meters per second squared times the height, the initial height of 20 meters, and that should tell us how fast Johnny will be riding at the bottom of the hill. All right, so we have uh, 2 times 9.8 is 19.6 times 20. And then we divide that, or not divide it, but take the square root. And we get 19.8 meters per second. That is actually pretty fast. 19.8 meters per second. If there was a, uh, a sign at the bottom of the hill saying, don't go faster than 35 miles per hour, I think he's going faster than that. So yeah, 19.8 meters per second is move along pretty quick. Johnny better have some good brakes on that bicycle. All right, so there's a good example of how to do that. Let me now do another example where we're going to use friction as something is coming down the hill and see how that changes the problem. 